Hello and welcome to FRAP Talks, where we discuss anything related to modular synthesis with FRAP Tools instruments. In the previous video we have seen how amplifiers can control audio and CV. Today we will focus on a specific kind of amplifier, the exponential ones, and how to control them through voltage. Let's take a step back. In the previous video we have made quite an extensive use of the 321 module. It may have occurred to you that while we were turning the knob of the 321, the signal's amplitude seems to increase way faster in the first part of the rotation than in the last one. That is perfectly normal because the 321's amplifiers have a linear response, meaning that they will increase the signal's amplitude by the same amount throughout all the knob. The problem is that the way uh, we as human beings perceive loudness is not linear, is somehow uh, logarithmic. In other words, we tend to be more sensitive towards amplitude changes in softer sounds than in louder ones. This is why the linear amplifiers seem to work more towards the first part of the knob than towards the last one. It's just because the same amplitude increment is more noticeable for us in the quieter range than in the louder. And this is where exponential amplifiers come in handy. By offering a non-linear response of the knob, they will somehow compensate the way we perceive sound and thus guarantee a smoother amplitude increment. A mixer is a device whose main purpose is to blend two or more signals into one. More complex mixers can also offer different blends of the same source signals to be used for different purposes. We might want, for example, a certain blend to be processed by a reverb, another one to be sent to our monitoring system and a third blend to be recorded. And those three blends, of course, can have dramatically different uh, balances of the individual sounds. Every time we need control over the amount of a specific sound in a given mix, we need an amplifier. For example, if we want three different mixes of four separate sound sources, we will need 12 uh, amplifiers. And since we are using amplifiers for the specific purpose of blending audio signals, we would need the exponential amplifiers. The best way to demonstrate a mixer's behavior, uh, exponential amplifiers and the different blends we can get out of a mixing situation is probably through our CGM mixer. Before getting into that, however, we need to introduce the concept of VCA. We usually control the amplitude of our sounds by rotating knobs or moving faders. However, we are in the Eurorock world and here we make an extensive use of control voltage. Control voltages are specific signals that basically can replace us turning knobs every time. An amplifier that can be controlled through control voltage is called VCA, which means voltage controlled amplifier. The CGM goes beyond the concept of a mixer and allows us to voltage control every crucial parameter of our mix, like the input gain, the stereo placement of the sound, the effect send and return. Let's see in detail how it works. The first thing that we can do is to use the channel VCA to mark the duration of our musical events, like notes or percussive elements. To do so, we simply have to patch an envelope coming from Falistri to its CV input. As soon as an external CV is patched, the knob that previously defined the amplifier's gain becomes the attenuator of the incoming signal, thus defining how much it will affect the sound's amplitude. In the previous video we have said that if the signal's amplitude exceeds the limit of the circuit that it is fed in, it can introduce distortion to the sound. In the case of the CGM, the first gain VCA purposely goes beyond unity gain so that it can force the incoming signal to exceed the limit of the channel module. However, we designed this circuit so that the audio waveform won't be brutally chopped once it reaches such a limit. Instead, the CGM gain stage distorts the sound very gradually, coloring the timbre and adding a general punchiness to the sound. We can take advantage of the VCA CV input to animate the timbre of the sound, not just its amplitude. For example, we can patch an LFO coming from Brainsource Green Oscillator to cyclically overdrive the circuit. However, the LFO is bipolar and has a quite high amplitude. Every time the LFO wave will have a negative value, the VCA will then be closed. 
The key here is to attenuate the LFO and add a positive offset with the 3 to 1 module so that it will work only towards the range of VCA that adds distortion. If you want to know more about voltage offsets, check out the previous video. The CGM, however, has more VCAs than this one, for example the ones on every effect mono send and stereo return. In this patch we are using a huge reverb to add some color to our sound. However, now it just sounds muddy and crowded. We need something to control the signal that must be processed. We're gonna use an envelope coming from Falistri. We'll patch it to the effect send CV input and we'll obtain a completely different result. In this way, the reverb will process only the sound that the envelope is allowing to pass through. Another idea is to patch the same envelope to the effect return CV input. In this way we are routing all the sound to the reverb, thus producing the same muddy effect as at the beginning of this patch. But we are shaping the effect volume to dry the patch on command. The result is an actual gated reverb. By playing with the gate sequence that triggers our envelope, we can obtain some rhythmic patterns that make our reverb stand out as an actual musical instrument. And this was our overview on exponential VCA. In the next video we will talk about linear VCA, negative amplification and four quadrant multipliers. If you want to know more or if you just found this video useful, please consider subscribing to our channel, following us on the social media and stay in touch.